Hey folks, Rich here at RC Informer. Today I have a uh, quick uh, how-to video where I'm going to show you how to uh, desolder and remove uh, your old uh, connectors or your stock connectors, in this case a, uh, a Dean's clone T-style connector, and, uh, and then add uh, these uh, real nice AN150 connectors. Now I just did an intro battery of these uh, uh, new 70C batteries, uh, 5500s from RoaringTopUSA.com. These two batteries are going to be wired uh, in series going in the HSD F16 for some videos I'm going to do. And uh, because they need to be wired in series and they're going to be drawing 100 to 130 amps or more, uh, I'm going to need something other than uh, these uh, clones connect clone connectors. These clone connectors of the Dean's uh, only hold up to about 60 amps and then they start to melt. So you really need, uh, need something a little bit more powerful. And that is where the AN150 connectors come in. Just to give you guys a quick look at uh, what these things look like, uh, I'm going to be soldering on a uh, female end, and again, this is a 7 millimeter bullet, and I'm also going to be soldering on here uh, the, uh, the male end. You can see how they go in there. They're real secure. They're nice. These are some of the nicest connectors around because they do have threads, so you can actually remove the plastic uh, sheathing off of it uh, or insulator off really pretty darn easily. Um, the other connector there is that we're not going to be soldering on today really is the other male end, okay? And the same thing, this goes into here. But uh, this male end is the, uh, the actually insulated bullet uh, because this is a spark arrestor system. So once you make all your connections with your batteries, this is the last connector that, connection that you make. This is actually soldered onto your ESC of your airplane. So this is on board your airplane. And uh, once you make all your connections, your final connection is made, and these go together, you get no spark because uh, the, uh, the, the device or the capacitor that's uh, inside here actually absorbs that initial um, uh, spark or there's a diode in there or something and you don't get any spark out of it. But anyway guys, uh, for today we're going to solder these two on uh, to, the, uh, to the batteries and I'm going to show you how to do that here in some uh, easy steps. Um, a real quick look here guys at the, uh, the AN150 connectors that I already installed on one battery just to show you. These are some of the nicest uh, connectors around and you can see here if you do a good job soldering these things on they will screw off. They'll, uh, they'll screw on and they'll unscrew real, real easy. And in the future, if you ever need to use this, uh, this connector again, um, they're actually pretty easy to desolder as long as you don't get um, any solder in those threads there. But you can see how nice these things go on and off pretty uh, darn easy. Now, before I get into this too much, this installation, a couple things you're going to need first and foremost. Wear some eye protection because sometimes when you're using a rosin core solder, which that's the other thing you're going to need, um, and you're heating it up quite a bit, it can splatter and go out. You don't want it going in your eyes. So get a pair of these babies over at Harbor Freight for like a buck or whatever the heck they are. It's definitely you want to be having these on when you're soldering. Also, you need a pretty powerful um, soldering gun. A regular soldering iron generally is not going to cut it with these AM150s. You need something pretty strong. In this case, I use this Weller industrial strength 300 watt uh, 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 soldering gun and uh, it will melt almost anything so it's the perfect thing for, uh, for getting these things on and you're also going to need something and everybody likes to use a different device there's a million, de a million different techniques to use you're going to need some device to, to hold some things and you'll see kind of how I do that there's different techniques to this thing guys I have my own way of doing it and uh, I'm going to show you uh, how I do this stuff uh, how I do, my, do it my way in the videos and uh, so far I've had a real good success with it. So let's get on with putting these connectors on. The first step to this process is to really just tin your connectors and all that means is you're going to heat this up with a soldering gun, each one of these, one at a time and then get some solder to flow in there and then you're going to remove the heat and let it dry. That way you can reheat it with the uh, end of the battery that's already been tinned and, um, and then uh, it'll make a nice good solder joint. You don't want to put a bare wire into a bare you know, non-tinned end because uh, that's considered a cold solder joint and sometimes those can kind of break over time. So uh, once you get this thing uh, secured uh, onto uh, something like this uh, alligator clip uh, hands-free unit, uh, you're ready to go. Now you don't need the cardboard box, that's just there so my camera will have something to focus on. And uh, you can see here that you really just want to kind of get it uh, set up like this and then you're ready to solder. Once you get your soldering gun tip uh, nice and hot, you can go ahead and put a little bit of solder on sort of to get some, uh, some solder flowing on it. And then very carefully you're going to go ahead and insert the tip in here. Again, being really careful uh, not to get uh, any solder on the threads. If you get solder on the threads, 
um, you can use a, uh, a precision needle file to get that off of there. But once you get this whole brass fitting or this fitting uh, hot enough, you can see that solder will flow nicely. Very carefully, you want to kind of rotate it around in there and just make sure it sort of flows everywhere. And uh, just make sure you get enough of it kind of all in there. Uh, not too much because it'll flow out of there. And then once you get it all in there, you can go ahead and remove your soldering gun and then just go ahead and let that thing uh, harden up and dry. The next thing you want to do is uh, remove uh, the insulation and remove uh, the old solder tip. Now, this is where you have to be kind of careful. Um, caution, you can blow yourself up, okay, doing this. So you have to be really careful as you do this, wear eye protection. Most importantly, you only want to remove one side at a time. Leave one side on, desolder one side, solder it, get it all insulated, and then do the other side. And I'll show you kind of how that works. With uh, just a, a hobby knife, very carefully just sort of score the end of your insulator, and, uh, or your, uh, I should say your heat shrink uh, wrap. And you can see just a little bit of scoring should be enough to get this thing uh, off of there because you don't want to cut into the uh, insulation. Um, once you have that off, and again, notice guys, I'm only removing one at a time. You don't want to remove both of these because again, you can blow yourself up. So you want to be very careful with this. Now you're ready to desolder this tip. Desoldering the tip is really pretty easy. Once you get the iron hot enough, you want to put a little bit of solder, mostly just to get some rosin on there. And then it really desolders usually just this simple. If, as long as it's not a real powerful connection, you can usually just heat up your wire and it'll come right off uh, easily. And you notice the nice thing is, is you already have a pre-tinned wire tip that uh, will fit right into the connector and you're ready to solder the two together. One trick I like to use instead of stripping some insulation is uh, I'll often just grab this with a pair of pliers. I'm not really trying to cut it, I'm just trying to grip it with something. You can use a regular pair or even a cutting pair just like I'm doing. And just push your insulation back. And you can see once you get that insulation back, you can go ahead and uh, solder this onto the new tip and then you can push your insulation back on and you should, that'll allow, make sure that you definitely have plenty of insulation uh, running into the, uh, the plastic end cap. The next step that's most often forgotten, by me especially, is to make sure you get your uh, plastic insulator cap on first before you do any soldering. I've often soldered this on and then realized, oh, I forgot to put the cap on. Then you gotta desolder and redo it again. So just make sure you get that end cap in place. The next step here is pretty much the, uh, the final step. You wanna use your, your hands-free holder here, as you can see, and uh, really get these things uh, lined up as best you can and uh, just insert uh, the end of this in here and then get this thing uh, ready to be pushed in place. Now sometimes this thing doesn't fit in here all that great right off the bat. Uh, but what we're going to do is we're going to heat this up and get it all nice and fluid and then with our fingers here, as you can see uh, lined up, we're going to squeeze this together and actually push the wire up into the connector and then get it nice and hot and liquidy and get it all together so the wire goes all the way in there as far as we can get it. And then we'll add a little bit more solder uh, if we need to as it's uh, drying. And then we're just going to kind of hold it together as it cool down, cools down and dries and uh, then, then the whole unit will be done. Once you get your soldering gun all heated up, you want to add a little bit of solder to it, again, just to get a little rosin on there so things flow better. Then you're going to go ahead and put your soldering gun in there and get everything nice and hot and get everything flowing well. And then with your hands, you're going to be able to squeeze the two of these things together to get that wire to go all the way up in there. Now, I kind of did a little bit of this off camera uh, just to kind of get this thing going because it's tough to do with the camera. If you need to, add a little solder in here and it'll flow in there. And you really want to get this thing fully saturated as best you can and not get any on the threads. Now, once you've got this thing all liquidy and it looks good and it's all filled up, go ahead and take that thing off of there. You want to make sure, it's also very important to make sure that you get the wire in the center of this thing so the end cap will screw around without the wire getting in the way. So once you've got it all in place, you want to remove your soldering gun and just let the thing dry. Once you've allowed sufficient time for everything to dry, you just want to inspect this and make sure it's, uh, uh, you got plenty of solder in there going all the way around and that it's uh, nice and secure. If you do get any you know, um, solder in these threads, uh, you can use a um, hobby knife to cut that out of there, uh, or you can uh, use a needle file with a uh, triangular uh, end on it. Now, what I can do here is push my insulation back up, and you can see, you notice I didn't cut that before, 
and then slide your insulating tip on here. And as long as you did it correctly and as long as you got that wire roughly in the, in the center, uh, you'll be able to screw this thing in place and uh, now your uh, connector is, uh, is done and it's ready to go. Now again, notice that I have the other one still soldered in place. Again, you want to make sure you finish one before you start in on the other because again, this is, you can blow yourself up doing this. So you want to be very careful. Just do one side at a time. Once you get your uh, final connector soldered in place, you can go ahead and uh, move the uh, insulated uh, cap on here and you can very carefully just kind of screw this uh, in place and, uh, and you're all done guys. This thing is uh, ready to go. Now one thing I like to do with my batteries and a caution, another caution here is uh, your airplanes are actually wired up. Most, most airplanes with AN150 connectors, especially the HSDs, coming from the ESC as a male and female and they're designed to plug right on into this. But one thing you have to be very careful of is the battery can actually, the way these are wired, can be plugged into itself, which you definitely don't want to do because at the very least, it's going to cause a spark and damage your connectors, and uh, it could also blow up the battery. So you got to be very careful not to plug the battery into itself, and also you really got to keep these things away from kids to make sure that they don't even attempt to do that. What I like to do is I like to take a rubber cap, and I like to put a rubber cap on the end of one of them at least, and that, that keeps them relatively safe, and if you keep them away from kids, you really won't have any problem, but having an insulated tip like this is a good way to do it. Now, um, I'm going to be running these batteries, two of these uh, 70C 5500 6 cells in series. And anytime you have a series connection uh, and you mount your two batteries in your airplane, such as uh, these two, um, you want to be very careful that once you mount your batteries uh, in your airplane that you're not fumbling the wires and by accident plugging a battery into itself and then causing a, you know, an explosion or at least a spark and damaging the connectors and all that kind of stuff. So what I usually do is I will color code my first connection. So you can see here, it's kind of idiot proof. If you look at the two color coded ones, that's going to be your number one connection. So you're going to plug that in first and you can see it goes on there real nicely. And now what you're left with is just a positive and a negative. So your negative is going to get connected to, the, to your black and black to black, and then your red connection is going to be the final connection where your spark arresting uh, bullet uh, gets plugged in there, and now you're going to be all plugged in and ready to, go, so, ready to go. So it's definitely a good idea to color code your first connection so you don't end up with uh, a confusion of wires once you get the two batteries in the airplane. Anyway, guys, AN150s, uh, if you guys have any questions, just uh, you know, comment or question below here in the video. Uh, I'll be getting uh, the two of these batteries together in uh, series going in the HSD 12 cell F16 here pretty soon. Uh, Roaring Top 70C, 5500 pack. Guys, check it out at RoaringTop.com. Appreciate you guys uh, watching RC Informer, and as always, we'll see you next time.